Good morning, Jim Hodges here, Archie here. Archie is almost six month old golden retriever, came in for our residency training program. Very sweet and affectionate, loving, smart. Uh, one of the things we did find out is uh, that he is a little bit of an alpha in the making. He can be a little strong-willed at times, but I believe if you become his leader, you're going to have no problems in life. He's going to listen to you. He's going to want to obey you. He's going to want to bond with you. It's important that we bond back with him. How do we do that? We do it through obedience. We do it through a lot of praise, okay? We want to praise him 20 times more during the day than we ever get on him. We want him looking at us. We want us telling him that he's being a good boy when indeed he's being a good boy. He's just laying there on the floor doing good. Add a boy, Archie. And that teaches him how to please. And the more he pleases, the more he excites us, the more uh, we try to please him in return. So I'm going to go through obedience. Uh, as I said, a sweet, affectionate, like primarily the reason he's here is for mostly puppy things, okay? Play, biting, mouthing, jumping, pulling on a leash. Just the, the normal garden variety kind of things that can get out of control if allowed to grow. Because whenever our dogs start to chew, start to jump, start to pull on a leash, and it continues to happen before long, it becomes a conditioned event, or conditioned events in this case, and they think they're doing the right thing. Because without realizing it, we taught them this was expected behavior. So I'm going to go through obedience. If he does something wrong, uh, I'm going to provide a consequence. You remember when we provide a consequence, I tend to believe it should be physical in nature because dogs communicate first, I believe, uh, between each other physically. But it's not designed to intimidate, dominate, break his spirit, hurt him, or have him fear us. It's just sort of like a quick influence, if you will. Then we move right back to praise uh, based on the resulted outcome of us providing the consequence, and we move on. Hey, buddy. You ready? One of the things that I like to see, and hopefully he's going to be doing it here, he's been doing a wonderful job, is looking. When he's looking at you, when your dog is looking at you, praise him, let him know how good he is. Maybe even get a little treat out from time to time. I don't like to bribe and lure with treats, except for when we're training, but I like to reward with treats when they're not expecting. I'll talk a little bit more about treats here in just a second when I go to give him one and uh, show you how I like to do it. Hey buddy, you ready? Listen to my tone of voice. Let's go. Now let's go with our walking command. Archie was a pretty good puller. Not in normal walks, but when he would see a cat, a dog, a squirrel, a leaf, all of a sudden he would start to bolt. Our let's go command is to, good boy, is designed to have him right beside us. If he's out in front of us on a walk and he sees something, he's going to react. Why is he going to react? I like to say two reasons. One, when he's out in front, he's leading the pack. If that continues on, he's going to get stronger and stronger and maybe try to move into that alpha role, if possible, for that personality and temperament. But number two, out of sight, out of mind. When he's beside me right now, it's important for him to be watching and seeing what I'm doing. The speed of my walk, he needs to adapt to it. If I turn, he needs to adapt. Let's go. So you see, I'm walking. I turn around, I want him to adapt to it. I step off, and a boy, I step off, I want him to be with me, okay? Later in life, as he gets good, and he's not going to be jumping out at things because we've taught him beside us that he can't, then we can give him more and more leash. But right now, we're going to have him on a real short leash, okay? But it's going to be loose. Leash handling is so key. Tight leashes aren't what gets it. Two loose leashes not. We pop up. Come on, good boy. We want a nice short leash so that we can tap it, okay? And a tap is that. I just provided a consequence to him, okay? If I had told him no. Uh, in and out, tap, release, and then you move right on, okay? And the let's go, we want to tap to our hip. Let's go. So if he does pull away from me, and he got away, and he's not going to do it, but I would tap right back in, tell him no, let's go. Good boy. Sit. Hand signal for sit, add a boy. When I ask him to sit, he should sit. He should hold that sit until I release him. If he did not sit just then, 
I would have been, first of all, I would have tapped the leash and I'd have gone, no, sit, and then I'd have come back and provided praise. Not as much as if he did it right the first time, but it's enough to let him know that I'm happy with what he did. He has to hold that sit Good. until I release it, okay? Now, if you watch my other videos, I don't keep him in a sit for a long, long time. Hate to put that pressure on their rear ends, but he's a real good sitter and seems to be pretty comfortable with it. So whenever I'm ready to release him from the sit, right, hands close. I gave him a treat. Talk about that again in a minute. Atta boy, good boy. So I said break. If you notice when I said break, break, that's the command. He comes right to my center of my body. He gets excited and everything because I've given him a treat, I pet, I loved him. And what I'm doing is I like to think I'm subliminally teaching him that I'm the center of the universe. That release means to come to me. That when he's out running, come to me. I'm going to pet him, love him. If he's out playing, I'm going to send him right back on his way. But I'm always going to reward him from coming to me. I'm never going to do anything that would seem like a negative. So, break. Sit. Good boy. Break. Good boy. Good boy. I believe when we praise, it's words, touch, treat, or toy. So I told him, good boy, and I petted him at the same time, okay? Let's go. So we go back from uh, the sit to the let's go. Sit. Now from the side, down, good boy. Down is just like sit in the fact that he's supposed to lay down and stay in that down until I release him. Now I'm gonna keep a dog possibly in a down a much longer time. When he downs or when he walks uh, on a let's go or sitting, I do not want him smelling the ground while he's working. When he's not working, if you don't mind it, he can smell. We don't want him to pick things up off the ground because that could be dangerous if you will. So I told him to down, he holds that down. Now, occasionally, especially with a strong-willed dog, I'll come in and go, stay. Now when I tell him to stay, he can smell the ground, he can roll on his side, he can uh, chew a bone. He's gonna be there for a while, but he can relax with it. Typically, when I tell a dog to stay, and that was the open palm in front of his face, I usually like to keep a dog there for at least a couple of minutes. Of course, I'm not gonna do that right now, but uh, that's how I normally like to do the down. Notice I did it from the front. Break. Down. Hand signal. Notice I did the down from the side. There, he was in front of me, I did the hand signal like this. That's down from in front. Sit. Good boy. Do you hear the tone of my voice? On the down, I have a little bit more inflection. When I ask him to come or I, or I ask him to uh, sit or place, I'm gonna try to be a little more animated a little more excited, I'm trying to connect with him, okay? Break, good boy, let's go. So let's go is on our left side, we're gonna do it again, this time, good, good boy. And he holds it until I release it. Now what I can do is do the COME command. COME is a lot like the break, but on leash, it is a mandatory command and he has to come to me. But my hands are gonna end up in the same place I've got a hand signal like this. <clears throat> he comes, and in this case, good boy, he sits right in front of me. Hand signal just like that. Now, if he did not start to come to me, it's okay. <clears throat> I would have tapped him just like that. Good boy. And I would have said no come. Good boy. At the end of that come, he has to hold that sit just like uh, if I put him in a sit. Break. Now, clients, uh, dog, potential dog trainers, dog owners out there, it's not mandatory that when you tell him to come that he sits, okay? On leash or off leash. The important thing is for him to come. And again, my target is right here. Why is my target here? Because if I hold my treat out here, I hold my hand out here, he comes here, and with him, he sees a cat or a squirrel or something, he may say, to heck with the treat, to heck with the coming, I'm going straight on. We want to build on success. We don't want to build on failure, okay? So we want to do everything we can to get him concentrating and paying attention with us. Let's go. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. So we can walk with the leash. I'll slow down. Good. And he adapts to it. Good boy. Notice how he's watching me? We want to praise that. Sit. Great. 
down. Good. Sit. Hear that tone of voice again for the sit command. I'm trying to encourage you to do that. That's a little bit of leaf. Good boy. Earlier, he would have probably taken that leaf and tried to grab it when he first came. He still just looked at it. Let's go. Next command is the P-L-A-C-E. Hand pointed. Please. Ah, oh boy. Now, I'm going to praise him uh, when he gets on that bed, when all four feet get on the bed. When I tell him to place, is lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what he does as long as it's permissive. But there's no sit or down on the bed. There's no chewing on the bed. But he's to remain on that bed easily two or three hours at a time. He can do that at almost six months of age. It's great when you want to relax at night. It's great for dinner. It's a wonderful time for him to be out with you but you having your own space and being the leader at the same time. Right. So just say, for example, he got up off the place. The tap or the consequence would have been a lot like we did with let's go, except instead of tapping here, I would have tapped back to the center of the bed. Okay, buddy. Yeah. Now that time, I wanted to give him a treat. Right. He did not know I had the treat out, but I wanted to reward him. I wanted to keep it interesting for him. He loves treats, okay? I do not, again, I want to stress this. I don't go through life having a treat out and ask him to obey, except when I'm teaching. After he starts learning, it's important that we don't use treats all the time, but we always use our love and affection with our voice and our touch, maybe even a toy, okay? That treat we give is going to be an unexpected bonus for him. Now let's talk about giving treats. So many people give treats like this. Uh, when they do this, this allows a dog to bite on your fingers, especially if little children are around. I like for him to take it out of the cup of my hand. It tends to make them more gentle. And if he gets too busy, I just close my hand. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to just give him a treat for the heck of it. I believe if we want to give our dog a treat, we always make them do something for it, okay? Break. So I'm going to try to do a C-O-M-E again. Cut. Good boy, cut. Atta boy, pet love. Break. Now let's say he was off leash just then. Say he's out in the backyard. You want him to come to you. So many of my clients tell me that, Jim, I'm, I can't get my dog to come to me. Well, guess what? You have probably told him to come or her to come and did something when they did come to you that they didn't appreciate. Why should I come to you if this is the way you're going to treat me? The off-leash come needs to be the best thing in the world. There should never be a consequence or negative uh, consequence of the action of coming, okay? And a lot of times the come should just be coming up to you. You pat them, love them, give them a treat, and release them. But I never give the word come unless I know they're going to come, okay? So how do I do that off-leash? I will go, uh, Archie, Archie, hey, look what I got. Come. I don't tell him to come, good boy. I don't tell him to come, break, until he decides to make that decision. So you notice he was walking around here. I started going, Archie, Archie. It took a second, and then he started making just like that. I could have told him to come when he started that then. Uh, started coming to me, I told him to come. Why? Because he knows he's coming, he's happy about coming, he wants what I've got, whether it's love, affection, a treat, or a toy, all I'm doing is reinforcing that, okay? So, let's go. Sit. The next command is the heel command. The heel command, we have a box beside us, a rectangular box. It's his job to stay in that box, it's my job to help him stay in that box. If he goes out of that box, we tap back into it. It's a great command when we're out at a market or a, a store, and we want to keep him close instead of that let's go. Hand signals like this, heel. I'll walk the straight line, take a few steps, stop, he sits. Notice how he sat? I can step right off, and he's in that automatic sit at the end of the heel. So we're going to go again, heel, hand signal. Now watch what happens. I step off. Right back, he comes back to get in place. What a good boy, good boy. So I like what he's doing there. So I think I may try to reward him on this one. If I've got a treat, 
So we're going to do it again. If he doesn't do it, he doesn't get the reward. Ready? Heal. So now we're going to do a 180. We turn, turn, turn. He came right back into the box. We stop. Look at me. Good. Treat, pet, love. Great. Atta boy. So keep in mind that heel is good for close encounters. And it's always important when we do that, his job is to stay there. If he starts to move out, it's no heel. When we stop, if he didn't see it, it would be no sit. Good boy. Let's go. Last thing is the, the load up command. This is great. If you allow your dog to get on furniture, that's fine. But the primary reason I use the load up is to teach them how to get into a vehicle. And it's just that. I use load up or hub, okay? So we get up to the point, and we never allow our dog to jump in to begin with, if, unless we told them to jump in. In the beginning, we want them to be doing it because we asked them to. Now listen to my tone of voice. One of the things that he has a hard time, because it's a little smaller footprint, and there's a little crater inside, but I'm gonna encourage him, he's gonna make it. Ready? Load up. Well, good job. Sometimes he overshoots it. Frank, that a boy. That's such a good boy. I am so happy. Good. Frank, see, he's got it going on. He is a really good boy. He's really smart. I tell people, smart dogs learn real quickly, but real training begins when you want them to do something and they want to do something else. It's real important that we, when we tell him something, he's got to do it. If we're not in a position, all right, let's go. Come on, get out of that. If, he's, if we're not in a position to make him do it, it's better not to say anything, okay? I call it the first two or three months is very black and white. We don't deal in shades of gray. It's either do it or you don't. You know, if you need me, my name is Jim Hodges, Jim Hodges Dog Training, Facebook, Jim Hodges Dog Training, 336-945-3232. I'm here for you if you need me. If you ever need a follow-up, there's never a charge. This guy's going to be a good boy. But as he grows up and matures, you're going to be tested, okay? You just have to look at that test and handle it and then move on to the next one. Pick up the phone and call me. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. Take care. God bless.